Dixon. We're gonna do some question and answers for you. So the first question that I had on my Instagram stories was how did we meet and how long have we known each other? We met like in school when we were... Yep, in reception. Yeah, so like what, <laughs> age five? Four slash Four, five. five. So yeah. that means it's 25 years now. Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, then we went through primary school together. We like in the same school from reception to year six and then kind of split up halfway through secondary, didn't we? Yeah, so... In about year nine, when I was 14, I moved to Wales, and then shortly you moved, I moved to, to Wales. Wales to live with my dad. And you then, moved back. Yeah, I moved back. And then eventually didn't. I moved back. Yeah. I think for most of our adult life, we haven't really kept, we kept in contact, but not like as close as we were. Yeah, yeah like friends, not so much best friends anymore. Yeah. I mean, a lot happened, a lot of moving, a yeah, lot of Yeah, just people. life happened, wasn't yeah. it? Like, we didn't fall out or anything. We no. just grew in different paths kind of thing. Mm. Um, I would say before we started talking about this, well, because of the photography, I think. Because yeah, well, I, you've, you've done my photography for years now. Yeah, so, so that's kind of what brought us back to into each other's lives mm. a lot, wasn't it? Was that I was starting my photography stuff. Yeah. And so I would come and take photos for you and... You gotta support friends in business. Yes. It's important. Absolutely you do. Did you have any questions on your Instagram stories in the end? Um, that was one of my questions oh, yeah. actually. A lot of the questions I do get on Instagram are are we ever gonna collab together? Oh yeah. Um We haven't actually talked about it, yeah. I don't think, too much. No, we keep meaning to meet up, have a coffee and actually chat about work. Sense. Yeah. But yeah, this is what I try and explain to everyone that we have to have an actual kind of like business meeting about yeah, um, sure. is how we both feel it's important for both of us to be comfortable yeah um otherwise it's not going to work it won't look good either no so. I mean a lot of suggestions that have popped up is like um tickling pillow fights you know like the girly mm -hmm, high mm -hmm. school stuff sleepover yeah I mean that might be where we start off yeah put my toes in the water yeah and see how it goes from there yeah, uh, yeah. but it definitely seems to be a favourite question of... Yeah, I did get that one a lot as well, actually. Yeah. I think pretty much it was, will we be collaborating and how did we meet? Um, so, yeah, that I, they were the only two questions I got pretty much on Instagram. So mm -hmm. I actually wrote my own questions. Everyone always wants to know about tattoos mm -hmm. and piercings and how many have you got and do you have any plans for any more? Do we have any backstory? I, I know you've got tattoos and piercings, so... I do, yes. Is there anything that you wanted to share about them? Um, well, when I was 17, I started my tattoo apprenticeship. So yeah. I have a few tattoos that aren't necessarily meaningful. Mm. They're more like badges, because, you know, when you work in a tattoo shop and you've got nothing else to do, they're all like, oh, yes, yeah, let's just tattoo each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I've got, obviously... Some on my wrists, uh, which are triketras. They don't really have any specific meaning to me anyway. I also have a big owl on my back with a clock in the middle, um, which some of you would have seen on Instagram. Mm. That actually has my oldest child's time of birth oh. on the clock. I've got a key on one side. I've got a big lily down on the lower half of my rib cage. Uh, I'm ashamed to say it's not actually finished. Oh, really? I had it done when I was 16. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had mine done when I was 15. Or was I oh. 14? I can't remember. The one on my hip, the butterfly. I had that oh, done. Oh, yeah, you did have that really done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, um, I had that done when I was like 16 and I had every intention of going to get it finished. But I didn't. And I keep thinking about it every now and then. I'm like, yeah, but it really hurt. <laughs> so yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to. Um, but no, that one actually has meaning. That um, is a lily for my granddad's funeral flower. Aww. So that one means a lot to me and I probably should get it done. Uh, for piercings, I actually have like 13. Mm. The two in my nose, I've got two on the top of my lip and two in the bottom, which I had re-pierced recently. But I, I'm so indecisive, like, I get bored of them really quickly. Mm -hmm. So I've taken them out again. Yeah. And then eventually, I guess, I will go back and get them re-pierced when yeah. I fancy a change. So, But I don't actually have 
any plans for any more at the moment. Um, I am planning to go get a tattoo, but I don't know what okay. I want exactly. Do you know where? No. You don't even know no, where? You I know, know I'm know going, something new. but as for what, where and when, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay. For a recap, I have my veganism uh, tattoo on my back that I had after being vegan for one year has um, the cow and then a love heart and then the top of the love heart is a V for vegan and then it's got um, to live which is from Peter Pan's to live would be an awfully big adventure Aww. which is kind of emotional for the cow. It is a lovely dainty tattoo for you. Oh yeah. It suits you it's, so it's, well. Um, it's watercolour yeah. kind of design. Um, yeah I really love it. I went to a vegan tattoo parlor as well so that was all kind Aww. of like yeah i was, didn't know that <laughs> oh yeah yeah so because some some inks aren't vegan but even when you got there not only are the ve the inks vegan the snacks the drinks they had soy milk do you know what i mean Aww. it was all like yeah it was a nice proper took care of you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was lovely okay. do i have any plans for any more um I want to have the one on my back extended. I want a pig underneath it as well. So I would like You're it to kind like of go down your spine. Yeah, go down my spine. I want a pig added on, and then I want um, some daisies put in. I actually messaged the artist that I saw that did the first part kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and because he doesn't live in this country, so he was like a visiting, uh, like he was like a guest. A, yeah, guest spot. Um, so he's gonna let me know if he comes back and then he's going to do it. he does have plans when I messaged him it was like during Covid like 2021 I think so he yeah, was so like, like just coming out of it yeah and yeah the rest of the world is still in it exactly and... so he said that um once the regulations have stopped and if he like he'll make his plans to come over and he's going to message me and then we can finish that Continue. off yeah. yeah um and then the only other one I want somewhere is some little ducklings to represent my kids because I call them my little ducklings because they follow like waddle around after me so I'd like to get like a mummy duck and then three babies and then maybe a daddy duck at the back <laughs> but I don't know because I want I want it to be about me and the kids and not about me and James and the kids yeah just your bond with them yeah exactly I think that's cute like, yeah. James doesn't need to be included in well, everything. Yeah, he's already on. <laughs> he's on my hip as well. I've got yeah. James written on my hip, so he doesn't need to be on everything. I'll um, just say that is like the rare exception. You two have been together for so long. Oh, anyone yeah. else should not have a name tag yeah. on them. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, we've been together fourteen years this month. Oh. Um, yeah, crazy and uh, yeah. That's like half your life. I know. <laughs> I know, it's mental. I was talking to him the other day and I was like, it won't be long before I've been with him for longer than in my life than yeah. I haven't. It's a, He's a little couple years older than me, so he's not quite Not quite there, there yet. yet. He's got a few more years yeah. for that. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. And like, I would have lived with him for longer than I ever lived with my mum. Oh. It's just, yeah, it's mental. It's adorable when you think about things like that. Though. Yeah. It's like you've, you've built so much together. Yeah. Okay. So my next question mm -hmm. is, you've had a stressful day, yep, and then you get home, or you, well, whatever, where are you going to unwind, what are you doing, what's your activity of choice to just kind of like... <sighs> so, it's really boring actually, I get a cup of coffee, yep. I go get in the bath, yep. and I watch TikTok. Nice. <laughs> that is yeah, yeah, literally no, I... how I de-stress myself yeah no I love a bath and then yeah I always say to James I'm like I'm gonna take my book I'm not gonna go on my phone and I, I just have my phone there in case I get a message but I'm gonna take my book and then I'm just like mm, 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 for like an hour and then he comes in and he's like I thought you were reading your book I'm like shut up oh, I could have read a lot of these pages in an hour but my phone says so. yeah 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 <laughs> no it it just decompresses your brain in a different way doesn't it it just yeah. switches off I don't take a coffee though can't drink hot drinks in the bath not oh, very well. I do. See, I get really cold really easy. So mm. sitting in, a hot in bath. yeah. Wow. It's like you know when you get in the sea and it's cold at first, and then you get used, used to, it. to it. See, if I get in the bath and I, I like you, I oh, sit you in there for like an hour. Oh, I yeah. get used to it. I fill it up again. I get used to that. If I drink oh. a coffee, it kind of like regulates my temperature. Oh, okay. So the so I just stay warm the... the whole time. Oh, I can't do. That. I'm, I'm ending up sitting there like. I guess like I start to get. I start to get sick. Well, I. Uh, I used to take wine in the shower, but wow. nine times out of ten, the shower would just fill my wine yeah, up with so water. You up so diluted. You'd wine. have to like hold your wine over there while you You're had like, a wash. Like this. 
Relaxing in the shower drink. isn't exactly the same as in the bath. No. Mm. You kind of just stood there like a bit of a lemon, like, hi. Someone asked me this the other day on Instagram, do you prefer baths or showers? And I was like, I baths in winter, showers in the summer. But then it depends, yeah, if I want to relax, I'm not going to relax in the shower. But a shower in a morning can be really like energising for the day. Yeah, I had a shower this morning when I woke up. Whereas um, a bath in the morning is just like... Yeah, see, like, I'll go sit in the bath for an hour, relax, de-stress. I'll empty the bath and then I'll have my shower. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, purely yeah, because yeah. I've been sat in the bath for so long, yeah. I'm like, right. You actually need to have a wash. Yeah, now. I yeah. need to sort my life out a little bit now. Yeah. Um, I'm oh, de-stressed, now I need to be clean. Bath and then a shower. Yeah, see, everyone's like, why? You've been sat in the bath for an hour, why are you not because clean? Because the and bath I'm like, is because stagnant I've been sat and it's full it. of my germs and yeah. dirt, so I can shower all of that off. Or it's like, oh, well, why didn't you just have a shower? I was like, because it's not the same. Yeah, and it's... also I feel like a bath gets to places that a shower can't. Yeah. When you like proper submerge, you're just, like, it gets everywhere. All up to here. Whereas so when you're and... in the shower, it goes down, but then it doesn't necessarily, you've got to kind of rub it in. Yeah, yeah so. it's... Very few people understand it. I'm glad you do. Oh yeah, that's that's my favourite choice. If I've got time, I'll have a bath then a shower. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I feel bad because you haven't got a drink, but like I'm right. I've okay. been drinking coffee all day. I should probably stop drinking caffeine. Um. So on that, what's what's your favourite drink and what's your favourite food? Coffee. Uh, so my favourite drink is coffee. Yeah. Uh, as a hot drink coffee? anyway. I I like all kinds of coffee really. So. The important factor, coffee. Yeah. Two sugars and milk. Nice. Nice and simple. Yeah. Like if I'm going to Costa Build or somewhere. Coffee. Yeah. If I'm going to Costa or somewhere, I'll get adventurous and have like a vanilla latte and stuff. Mm. But um, Do you have syrup at home? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. We have a coffee you? machine. So we've got caramel and vanilla. Oh, yeah. Um, before we moved, we did have like chocolate and mm. gingerbread men and stuff like that. But uh, they never got used, so... We gave them away, so now we just keep my favourite. Yeah, 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 yeah. On hand. Yeah. No, we've got caramel. I think. Um, we used to have. I think we only ever have one at a time. Mm. We used to have vanilla, and now we've got caramel. Yeah. See, so I get the little, little mm. bottles. Of oh, it. It, James got me one for Christmas one year. It's like one of the giant bottles. Giant bottle. ones. It, but it took so long to get through because I was you don't want tiny it all bit. the time either, no, do no, you? No. So it's like the caramel one. I find quite sweet. Oh yeah. So I very rarely have the caramel. Well, do, Most no of sugar. the time, it's the vanilla. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, my favourite cold drink, on the mm. other hand, is probably Monster. Monster. Ha -ha! <laughs> <laughs> so I've had like four coffees and a Monster before you got wow. here today. I've cleaned the whole house. Not you know, we're, we're doing well. You're either going to clean the whole house or go <laughs> running, aren't you? Yeah, I, I definitely wasn't going running. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a uh, fun Yeah, you got to be stressed for what you're doing. Yeah. I'm going for, going for a, a run. run. I, don't yeah. get me wrong, I know some people do that. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah but not you. Each to their own, not me, no. <laughs> so, favourite food? Um, This is a tricky one for me. Um, My favourite foods are all meat based <laughs> oh, yeah. That's fine. this is probably like the only thing we have some kind of conflict on is you are mm -hmm. obviously vegan and i'm really really not <laughs> yeah um but yeah anything burgers steak lamb lamb's probably my favorite overall mm. um is that on like a roast or anything any, any anything kind of lamb. lamb burgers lamb chops lamb shanks do you have it with mint yes, yes. yeah Mm -hmm. That is the winning combination. It is. It's funny. Are I you didn't... allowed to say that? Me. Well, <laughs> I know that it is known as that, but yeah. I didn't even like lamb before I went vegan. No, so, you didn't, did you? No, no. Um, I would only ever eat processed meat anyway, which doesn't really taste like meat. Yeah, chicken and stuff. Yeah, well, not well, chicken nuggets and chicken burgers and chicken. You know, when you buy the like frozen battered chicken breast. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like the bird's eye ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sausages. I liked bacon, but that's not... I still don't feel like that's proper meat. It's like so full of salt in that. And if I had like a chicken curry, I would eat the sauce and the rice and all the chicken chunks would be left on my plate. Oh. And this is before I was vegan. Like, <laughs> I just, yeah, I've never been a big meat eater. Meat eater. That probably made your transition quite easy though, didn't it? it yeah, probably I dropped meat really easy. Yeah. But um, what's, what, what's your favourite meal and drink? Oh, um... 
roast dinner, roast potato. I just love a potato. Any kind of potato. I like potato, croquette. I like mash. As long as it's like buttery, it's got to be buttery. I like to put cheese in my mash. You can't have yeah, that. Yeah, I can't have that. <laughs> I put mustard in my mash. I put mayonnaise in my mash. Oh yeah, I do that too. Love mayonnaise in my mash. I think mayonnaise is a great condiment for so many things. Oh, yeah. It's so underrated. Um, if I have a, like a chicken burger, I've got to have so much mayonnaise that it's like dripping off. Oh, is the mayonnaise made with eggs? Oh, you can get vegan mayo. Oh. I don't know. What I don't it's imagine made from. that's the same. <laughs> no, well, I guess it's it's not quite as like um, creamy. I mm. guess, but I, I do like the taste of it. It's kind of more like a lemon mayo. Oh, I don't like lemon. Ah, oh. I tried Polish mayonnaise the other day. They make it with like more of the egg yolk, I believe. Oh, so it's a bit more and yellow. It, yeah, so it was like a darker, creamier colour. Mm. It was really good. Is it like salad cream? It was a lot stronger of a taste. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say quite like salad cream. It wasn't tangy like that. Mm. It was more creamier. Mm. But it was just like a stronger mayonnaise taste. So you didn't like need to use as much. But mm -hmm. I think, ah, oh, I love mayonnaise. I changed my answer. My, my favourite my food is mayonnaise, yeah. Uh, my favourite drink. I really struggle with drinks now because I always just drink water. Um, I don't know, I, I've had a lemonade today, but I very, very rarely have fizzy drinks anymore. Mm. And I do drink coffee, but I wouldn't drink it all the time. I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, that's my favourite drink. Um, what would I say is my favourite drink? I like a mocktail. There you go. That's my favourite flavour drink. Which one? Just any, really. It's just any, like just a fruity, juicy, fruity. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a mixture. How long have you been creating adult content and how did you discover the industry? What got you into it? Uh, so basically, um, it's a funny story. Um, I don't really know mm -hmm. why or how like I do it. Um, when a few friends found out that I was doing it, they were like, Oh, well, yeah. I'm surprised you weren't doing it sooner, to be fair. I'm like, mm. oh. So that's what you think of me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they were just like, yeah, that's... we kind of expected it, you know? Yeah. Um, I haven't been doing it long, probably about six months now. Mm. I haven't launched my OnlyFans yet. Mm -hmm. um, I will be doing it. Mm -hmm. But right now... I want to build up the content so when I do launch yep. I've got enough content on there to keep everybody happy so they're not paying for nothing because yep. it's about you guys. Mm -hmm. um, obviously I found out about it via social media. Um, mm -hmm. You know you can't really go on TikTok without no, 100%. someone advertising on there. That's how I found it. Yeah so I did a bit of research into it, made sure I was happy I understood what it was going to entail. And I found out you did mm -hmm. it. <laughs> um, well, you asked about some photos, didn't you? If I could, I think maybe yeah, possibly we were going to do a big wash shoot, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, haha, I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that makes so much sense now. Yeah. Everything has just clicked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, it was something I, I didn't walk into blindly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I don't want to say it's like kind of my personality. Mm. Um, I'm a bit flirtatious anyway, a bit risque. Um, it's not the most intriguing answer for you, no, but that is, that is my answer. Is... I still think it's interesting. Yeah. So um, you said that you're still building up your content mm -hmm. and trying to get um, like a decent amount together. Yeah. Um, so do you have a favourite type of content that you like to make so far? My favourite will always be photos. Mm -hmm. um, I like the boudoir photos and stuff mm -hmm. um, just because you can capture so much in one image. Yeah. Um, it's a bit more suggestive. Yeah, yeah. You, there's a lot more you can imagine about a photo whereas in a video what you see is what you get kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I don't like making videos. No, But no, my no. favourite is always going to be a suggestive picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, so how do you think of new content ideas while you're still building stuff up? Is it because like you're still at the beginning or like not the beginning, but do you know what I mean? Like you, you still, everything's still fresh. Or? Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I struggle with content ideas. Uh, any content creator does. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I am quite creative anyway. Mm -hmm. So when I do have a new idea, I have to write it down because I forget. Oh, I yeah. will forget. Yeah. I've, I've got an, like a work notebook. Yeah. Do you have one? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So like when I think of an idea, I'll have to write it down and go back to it later. And then yeah. whilst I'm thinking about it later on, I'm like, right, what can I add to it to make it? spicier different mm -hmm. what can mm -hmm. i bring and it's getting to a point where um a lot of there's not a lot of new ideas in the industry you know mm -hmm. like Everyone's done it. tentacles and hammers and traffic cones and mm -hmm. coming up with something different is quite few and far between it's actually brand new yeah, yeah I'm so not good at that. i've kind of just got to take an old idea and make it my own yeah and that's kind of how i run with new content ideas yeah yeah so just kind of being inspired by what other people have done but take putting your own twist on it yeah so i mean not directly copying no, no but no. if i see another creator do something i'm like well that's great i could do it this way mm -hmm. or spin it somehow and make it different one of my followers the other day wanted me to sing in the shower mm -hmm. so so you take some inspiration from what like followers ask for as well. Yeah. So, from singing in the shower, I had loads of idea, di loads of different ideas that could have done. So it's kind of like a brainstorm. Yeah. So, from that, I got several other like uh, several other ideas, mm -hmm. and then from each of those ideas, I can branch off new ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, whether I use all of those ideas is few and far between. But I will pick the ones that I think I can do the best content with. Yeah. And that's kind of where I get my inspiration from. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a lot more traditional than what I kind of post and make. I, don't, I try. I, people have asked me to do kind of like more cosplay stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not really comfortable. Like not, it's not that I'm uncomfortable with it. But I'm just not like I don't have the confidence to kind of act and be something else something that i'm yeah. not so i prefer to be like the online girlfriend the girl next door mine yeah mine are very like a couple of our uh shared followers shared followers yeah um have described you quite like the girl yeah. next door vibes yeah and I like i totally like see that. it so yeah i try i try not to actually be too out there now because it tends to kind of it just puts me on a path I don't want to be on. Yeah. So I'm actually like, no, I'm just going to dial it back and I'm just going to be... what you like. Yeah. yeah, and then everything that I make is to my, like, enjoyment and then it's um, a bit more authentic, I think, well, for you me. Don't, you don't want to be stuck doing something that you're not enjoying because mm -hmm. for it to give the best content, it has to feel real. Yeah. And if you're not enjoying it, it's not real... Yeah, your yeah. followers can tell you're not enjoying it. Unless you're like it. an it's absolutely like, amazing actor, yeah. which I'm not. I mean, and I don't think like I have had a few uh, comments about, oh, like, do you actually enjoy it? Mm -hmm. um, is it like the film industry on you know like certain hubs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's say? Um, and uh, we have had conversations about how a lot of them are fake you can tell it's fake mm -hmm. and it's just not the same vibe no that's not what i'm trying to i could i don't think i could achieve that look if i wanted to anywhere yeah. and i don't want to so well, no mine's just a lot more like um well it's just back to basics back to basics yeah yeah. That's, uh, yeah yeah that's that's more that's more mine but like i love that like what um some other creators do when they're like having fun with like I have fun with it but when people are like they're doing cosplay and they're bringing in these like unique toys I'm like that's really cool but well, I think a lot cosplay is very popular but I mm. think a lot of the people that do the cosplay would do cosplay in real life anyway yeah I um do. and they'll know what the characters do they'll know what they say like a lot of them dress up as anime characters now if you ask me about an anime character I don't have a clue mm -mm. I really don't like I'm happy to dress up as Deadpool and ride my unicorn for you. Yeah. You know, that's about the only thing I really know. Yeah. But to get into proper cosplay like some of those creators do, like 
fair play to them. Yeah, yeah, it takes a lot of work, yeah. a lot of research. That is something I don't think I'd be able to do either. Mm. Okay, so what's one thing about this industry that surprised you? There wasn't really anything that surprised me. I mean, mm. the thing that like surprised me the most was probably where one content creator will help another mm -hmm. and they've kind of turned around and stabbed the other creator in the back kind of thing mm -hmm. and it causes beef between them yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It can, I find that quite difficult I find I found that that because obviously I've been doing it for nearly three years now I think that creators are very defensive and very like private and will push other creators away because it's like competition whereas yeah, so, so I like find it quite gatekeeping it. gatekeeping yeah. yeah I find it quite um or I have found it quite lonely mm. because I feel like oh you try and reach out to other creators and be like like just hi and they're like unless you're gonna pay for a shout out I'm not interested and it's yeah. like oh, come on I mean not all of them are like that no no, they, no 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 this but, is just like the savage points yeah of so that was industry. something that was a surprise to me yeah I mean I've seen a lot of horror stories from uh quite popular creators mm. and they've had some terrible things happen mm. and say to them it's just like people who actually go out of their way to do these things mm -hmm. it's like, I don't turn up to your work office and start calling you names do I no no no, no. I remember there was one creator um within the past kind of six months of me starting um and I subscribed to her page and I tipped her and I was like, like tipped her for her time with the message and said, because she had quite a big um, TikTok account. Mm -hmm. And I said, how much would you charge for, um, to just duet one of my TikTok videos so I could be like on your feed, get a bit of like recognition that way. And she was like, I'll send me your um, TikTok username and I'll let you know if I see one that I've worth duet. And I was like, okay, cool. Also, I'm like waiting to hear back or whatever. She never duetted one of mine, but she actually started to copy my videos. And I was like, I've literally paid you. Like, okay, I've only paid you your subscription fee and then like a $10 tip. It's the audacity, but, isn't like, it? Yeah, it's like, yeah, come If on. you don't want to, say you don't want to. Yeah. Obviously TikTok it is kind of been... like that anyway, but yeah. it was the fact that I've gone, can you duet my videos? And then she didn't duet them at all, didn't contact me about it and then just started But copying. the thing is, like, she could have done it another way she could have duetted your video exactly. copying you i know that's the bit that frustrated me and yeah. i'm like why couldn't you have duetted my video and then just done it alongside me yeah but no no and i was like that's that's actually that's that's harsh and you can't call them out for it either no no <laughs> that's it i just didn't subscribe like i cancelled my subscription and i cut her yeah, I like stopped you. following her and everything and i was like oh no i'm not another interested. thing um it doesn't surprise me about the industry because it is within every industry really yeah. uh, a similar situation um so since i was 18 onwards i did a lot of private photo shoots and stuff mm -hmm. so this isn't like new territory for me i've been doing it for a very long time but the amount of naivety with content creators and the audacity of a lot of photographers and mm -hmm. stuff or people posing to be photographers mm -hmm. a lot of the girls who are just coming into it I've made these mistakes mm -hmm. I made them when I was younger I spoke to a lot of people in the industry I learned a lot from them these people will use you mm -hmm. just for the content you the the reward you get is very minimal um it's basically like for their own feels like they're Selves. in collection sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to do photo shoots for a lovely guy who, he was honest, it was for his own personal collection. They The photos never went anywhere, but he did it because he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. He was a hobby photographer. And then there's the other hand of people who will tell you you'll get um, modelling contracts, um, they're very high up in the industry and they know these people and you should do a free shoot for them and then you never get anything in return um, so the most shocking thing about it is people don't do their research mm -hmm. into it 
and that's super important within this industry mm -hmm. because of the risks mm -hmm. i've seen a lot of that with um people that are collaborating and they're not doing like health checks and stuff i think super that's, important yeah, yeah yeah i've seen a lot of stuff like that um obviously i haven't kind of collaborated so it hasn't been a thing for me but um someone i follow and he's always saying as soon as someone is like doesn't have them i'll never work with them or anybody that they work with because yeah. it's like obviously it's a risk if they don't do it and they still work with them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's totally understandable i mean health checks in general um need to be done i mean not only for the infections and diseases. Um, I went for my smear test the other day. Mm -hmm. That's an important one. Every three years, women mm -hmm. should do it. There's mm -hmm. nothing scary about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's something that seems a lot of people are like, oh, you're so proud you're getting checked and stuff. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I am. I, I'm. It helps out people who aren't feeling so comfortable as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, even smear tests now, they're such like a taboo thing. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of women I know, they'll be like, oh yeah, I'll get it done eventually. And mm -hmm. they're like 35 and they've had one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Just go and check. You need to just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really do. It's not anything terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've had kids, yeah. it's... I understand if you haven't had kids, but if you've had kids, you've had all this done before. Yeah. It's no different. It needs to be done. It's super important. Mm -hmm. STI checks are super important. I mean, you can never really trust anyone. No. I mean, you never if, know. if you've been in a relationship for five years, mm -hmm. two years into that, one of you could have cheated. Yeah. Could have got anything. I mean, it's not just important to check at the beginning and the end and the beginning and the end. Like, Midway doesn't hurt as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's never going to be... Um... Do it as a fun day out. Yes, go get checked together. <sighs> but then one of you comes back. Oh, oh, yeah, like, oh that wasn't a fun day. <laughs> We've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, one of us has got the clap. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? A fun day just turned into a thunderstorm. Yeah. But yeah, no. Oh it's still important to get checked. Yeah. <laughs> You'd rather know. Uh, so moving on from <laughs> from trauma, um, what's the biggest challenge you're facing with content creation or promotion, and how are you tackling it? If you have any, maybe you can be like nothing. Uh, so like so I don't, same. I don't really have a problem with it. It's the, the problem is me. Mm. I'm the problem. It's me. me. But um, my problem is I'm super lazy. Mm. I lack all kinds of motivation. I mean, money talks to me. If you're going to say, you know, here's 50 quid, go chuck on some nice underwear mm -hmm. and send me some photos, I'd be like, yeah, done, I can do I'll that. go do it now, mate. But when it comes to actually, like... Pushing it. Is yeah, it like when I know, I'm like, if I don't go film the content, I'm not going to have a backlog of content. And then I'm like... Uh, I'm gonna eat a pizza. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. Or later or Yeah. Kinda of like the washing up, I look at it and think I should probably do that. I'll do it later. Yeah. It's <laughs> the problem for tomorrow. Maybe. Yeah, there's there's always a tomorrow for it. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, how I'm tackling so it. How like, are you tackling it? It's hard. Um How do you tackle yourself? It's like a constant fight in mm -hmm. your mind. You're like, I need to do it. I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You should go do it. And the only thing to overcome that is by actually going and doing it. Yeah. So sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I'll go do it. Mm -hmm. And then do you feel better for it or you just like that? Yeah. So like once I've done it, I'm like, great, now I've got some content. I can keep going. I've got, say, three weeks worth of Instagram posts and stuff to put up. And then it's great. And then in the next three weeks, I'm like, oh, I should really do that again. I've run out of content. Oh, you've run out. <laughs> so you're like, like, and then behind again. Yeah, so like, yeah, I'm like that. two weeks in, I should probably go, do you know what? I'm I need start. to create some content. Yeah. And I should start now. But I don't. I wait. Yeah. And then like a week after that. So we're like four weeks in now. And I'm like, I'm yeah, do you know what? I'll go, take, I'll, I'll go do that now. Yeah. 
I <laughs> oh, see. I feel like mine is. I'll get ahead, and then I get. I, I'm just like quite a poorly person, so I'll get sick, and then I'll use up all that content, and then I'm scrambling again. Yeah, see, because that's I've me. Been unwell. But I'm just lazy. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've got it, but I'm always sick. And then once I I stop being sick, I'm trying to catch up with my household as well. Yeah. So then I'm kind of like I want to catch up with my household before I catch up with work. And yeah. when I say household, I mean James' kids and chores. Oh, of course. And yeah. then, um, then I'll finally get to grips, and I'm like, right, I can do my work now and then I'll get sick and it's just like this endless cycle. I haven't been sick for a while now, touch wood. Good. And uh, I've got into a good routine with my housework and I'm doing loads of home educating and um, my content is, it's not as much as it used to be but I, I don't think I had a very healthy work-life balance before. Yeah, so I balance think is super important. Yeah, I think before I was making a lot more content, promoting a lot more, but I wasn't really seeing my kids and I was like kind of behind with with stuff with them. Whereas yeah. I feel like now I've got a much better balance with them and the work. See, there are there are just some creators who are just built different. Like mm. they will pump out content every single day. It's fresh content, film that but day. I wonder if they and then, their kids are in school or something, or if they don't have kids. Yeah, it's probably a lot different because yeah. obviously you home educate. Um and but then yeah. like they'll go out with their kids, they'll take them places. Oh right. And even though they've got all of this content on the go, mm -hmm. their work-life balance seems really good. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it is really good or not, I have no idea. It yeah. seems really good, you know, it's yeah, yeah. Instagram good kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, see, like, I was, I've been lazy all week, it's to be really fair. Hard. You shouldn't so. compare, though, because you never know. Oh, no. I See, that's one thing that doesn't bother them. I don't aspire to be like them. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know I can't do it. There right. is, I have no delusions about it. I know what I am, what I can do, what I will do. That's really great to have like that awareness. Yeah, I mean, I'm not coming into this thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. Mm. I'm like, you know what? If I make 20 quid for a kebab at the end of the week, sorted. Oh, that was my goal as well at first. I literally started it to have a bit of pocket money every month to have takeaway. Yeah, literally. And then I think it's because I started as well with TikTok. Um, at, it was like 2020, mm -hmm. so everyone was just stuck at home. Yeah. So I think that's kind of why it went from like, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually making money. But I think if I started now, it wouldn't be the same. I don't know. I See, think I've really got there's a, name a lot now. There's a lot of stories yeah. about people starting now and some people making no money and people making money. I mean... People who are making no money probably aren't advertising properly. Um, mm. They're not utilising all of their platforms and stuff. I don't advertise properly. I don't like doing TikToks. I like mm. watching TikToks. Yeah. I don't like doing them. It's a lot of effort. Mm. Like some of the TikToks and well, Instagram posts, some of them I put a lot of effort into. Mm -hmm. And they don't get as many likes as oh, no. one where I've just kind of Jeez. woken up and I'm like, hey guys. Yeah, that gets the best. I find and that. it smashes it and I'm, yeah. I'm just like, I don't TikTok's get it. TikTok's the same to be fair. Yeah. The ones, I've spent hours on a TikTok before like trying to do like real high end like editing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Completely flops. I literally just, I, there, there was one that went like viral and it was the, you know the, um, I don't know if you, it was a while ago, the trend where you'd go, um, you, you like tap your legs, do that, and do that, and then oh, you, yeah, yeah, or something, and, and then you would do your um, it was like five things about me, or something, and you go do, 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 oh, yeah, no, do, do, yeah, or yeah, I know like the one that. you're on about, I can't remember the song where it didn't do that again, it, you did that, and then you just like, do, 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 and you would just keep going, yeah, and that I literally just did that on a whim, whatever, and then I think that was the one that got um got like 2 million views and I made yeah. a fat, well I made $1,200 in one day mm. from that video. It was insane. Then my account got banned. Yeah, see, um, like with TikTok, I'm like, you don't want to go too look viral my TikTok, your account gets deleted. I like the hot dog one. The hot, the hot oh, dog yeah, one made that was me laugh so much. So fun. Much. And someone I commented you on it. me on that, didn't you? Yeah, by one. Um, <laughs> but someone commented on it and they were like, you're playing it wrong. I was like, 
Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, a sun purpose. Yes. Thank you. Um, you should have, um, you, well, you could, could still do it. Reply to that comment, make another video, and then do it again the same way and be like, is this better? And just, do you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> oh, no, because I've never beat that score that I did. I can oh, guarantee yeah, it. Oh, well, maybe you would. Maybe you would. <laughs> but um, no, it's just like, I don't want to, again, back to the laziness of me, mm. I don't want to put too much effort into TikTok. And you could be doing other when, things. Well, no, it's not even that. It's, oh. I don't want to lose the channel. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are always getting banned on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so strict. So, like, if I'm you go on, on my, my like, TikTok... I'm on my, seventh or eighth account now. Yeah. I think, I, overall, I've had a lot more than that. But I say seven. I've lost... Um, I always lose them when they get to about 70,000. One made it to 98,000, I think. And the one I'm on now is on like eighty one thousand. Oh, so you're expecting it anytime soon. Anytime soon. Um, yeah, I, I I lost one count at like forty thousand. I lost one the other day. It's at like seventeen thousand. And then, but when you go on um, TikTok, the count's still there, but I can't log into it. Oh. So that's really frustrating. Because it still exists, yeah, but they just, just won't let me log into it now. But they said when I try and log in, it says your account's been banned. That's but so my rude. video and my accounts are still sat there. So yeah, I see what you mean about not wanting to lose it. But then I suppose if you're not really gaining much from it anyway, then what, what's there to lose? Yeah, exactly. But so, I mean, I keep thinking about making the TikToks and stuff, but as I said, it's not going to be the content it should be mm -hmm. to advertise. But it's like, is there any point in me doing it? Is that what people want to see? But lately, speaking to people, I'm like well, maybe that is what they want to see, mm. you know? Like, a lot of the videos I do and the people I talk to, they're like, um, oh, I'd love to see, like, the bloopers from that because, obviously, mm -hmm. nothing is perfect when we do it first. There's mm -hmm. always a mistake. There's always a funny bit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't keep them. No, yeah. And he was like, oh, that's a shame. And I was like... I should keep them. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, maybe I should keep them. Maybe mm -hmm. I should put them out there for people to see because, you mm -hmm. know... We are normal people. I mean, if you want the girlfriend experience, I'm the right person. I'll ignore you for 24 hours for no reason and then I'll come back like nothing happened. Yeah, perfect. Really authentic uh, experience. Yeah, I'll, gi I'll give you the real girlfriend treatment. But um, it's, it's weird. You can't predict what anyone's going to ask for. No, no. So it's really hard to put the content into anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... You might be like, oh, yeah, they won't want to see that. And Actually, then, like, 50 people do want to see it. Yeah, I find that a real struggle with TikTok. Because my ones with where I'm actually just sat talking mm -hmm. tend to do quite well. But then, And I'll just do them randomly. But then when I actually go, right, I'm going to try and make some more talking ones. And then I put thought into them. They never do well. It's yeah, so I annoying. See, people are always like, oh, you should go live. And I'm like, but what do we talk about? Mm. To be fair, like, I, are you I coming just to lives. watch me sat there? I like the lives a lot. I always like I put the live. But you on were doing crosswords the other day. Weren't yeah, you? I do crosswords, and I like doing. Um, I chores. couldn't help you. I'm dyslexic, and oh, I was no, like, I, I can't, can't do it. I can't play this. <laughs> no. Um, so often I'll put something, and then like ten people are just like, "Yeah, got it," and I'm like, "Oh, I'll okay, go. I'm just right done." And like, I. No it kind of feels like cheating, does it not? It's a group effort. <laughs> We're all working together. It's team teamwork, team, team building. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoy the lives. I enjoy them. They're probably my favourite part. Um, apart from you can get a lot of trolls. Trolls oh, are frustrating. Yeah. So especially, I I think there are like Reddit um, forums or like um, WhatsApp groups or something where they'll share the video into these groups and then you get flooded because um, you'll see it, it's like this person shared your live and then like a minute later it's just like bam, 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 troll, troll, troll. And so every time I see someone, someone shared your live, I'm like waiting for it. It doesn't happen very often lately, but no. it used to happen a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. So in your opinion, mm -hmm. what would be a really important like strength of someone or personality trait to be successful in this industry? You definitely have to be thick-skinned. That was literally the first thing that came to my mind. Like, literally, people are going to call you names. Mm -hmm. Savage names. Yeah. Like, I don't particularly care. Like, you can call me what you want. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just words to mm -hmm. me. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who do get bombarded by trolls. Mm -hmm. 
and everyone does have a breaking point. I mm. mean, in some of those situations, I'm sat there and thinking, oh, even I would have lost it, you know, mm. about five minutes ago. If you can make it funny mm. and you're the kind of person that doesn't care and you can just flip it round, that is going to work for you. Yeah. I mean, as I said, it gets to everyone eventually. There will be something that will trigger you. Yeah. But 90% of the time, that will work if you can do it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's super important that you you aren't overly um, emotional about the things these people are saying. Mm -hmm. Because they are there to upset you. Yeah. Like, that's their aim. And if you let them upset you, like, they win. Yeah. So yeah, I think being, being thick-skinned thick yeah. is probably the most important. What is one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting out? Building your social media platforms is the most important thing because mm. if you jump straight into it, say if we're um, on the site that shall not be named, yeah. um, if we're talking about starting that, you need the pre-exposure to have customers yeah. it's advertising before you open a shop you advertise it people have got to know where it is what's going on what you're doing mm -hmm. so basically you're advertising yourself on multiple different platforms you'll funnel it from one platform to another build them all up and whilst you're building up all of those platforms you need to backlog your content mm -hmm. so when you do start and everything's official, you have more than one video to look at mm -hmm. and you're not constantly chasing your own tail kind of thing to keep up with the demand because if there's nothing there, people aren't going to buy it. Yeah. There's no point in having an empty shop, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think the before um, advertisement is probably biggest thing you'll need to do yeah there's no in-house promotion on the website no well i think there's very limited they like feature like six a week or something yeah i don't i don't think it's much or like you're like i think occasionally you get like a suggested creator mm. but yeah it's, it's nothing that you have any control over whatsoever yeah you literally need to funnel it in from outside sources yeah um you can't just be like on that website and be like brunette yeah the discover the that. discoverability yeah. is no yeah so you need to be creative and get it from other places. Um, as I said about, like, you can funnel from TikTok to your Instagram, from Instagram to Twitter, from Twitter to the site. Yeah. Um, I think you can say it on YouTube. Can you? I think so. I've got videos with OnlyFans in the title. Do you want to say it or? I don't mind. I just say it. I don't, I don't know. I think we all know what we're talking we, we about. We know anyway. what we're talking about, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, advertise, advertise, advertise. It is, yeah, it's all about your social media. Mm. Um, what, do you have any other jobs that you would like, that you would like to try or you have tried that you enjoyed? Like if you weren't doing this job, what, what would you do? Um, or just completely unrealistic dream job? <laughs> well, like I did my tattoo apprenticeship and stuff oh, yeah. and I would love to do that. I mean, I've got all the time in the world to do that. Yeah. Um, I'll probably go back to tattooing one day, maybe. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's been like my dream job since I was like 11. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Super long time, I know. Yeah. I started it, life got in the way, you know, yeah. life does. Um, I remember yeah. obviously doing a lot of drawings and designs. Um, I don't I don't remember seeing anything that you've tattooed. Uh, it's because I was an apprentice at the time. Yeah. It obviously never really got So have you tattooed? Advertised. A uh, human. Yes. Oh, cool. Several. Oh, right. Well, more than several, but yeah, no. I have. Oh, that's awesome. I did um, Bert and Ernie. Oh, yeah. On some cousins. Um, one had Bert, one had Ernie. Um, I've done like a colour anchor. Mm -hmm. um, I've done some tribal. I hate tribal. Oh, really? Yeah, it's so messy. <laughs> oh, right. It's so messy. I have yet to meet an artist who likes doing I love tribal. tribal. Alright. But yeah, I've done a few bits. Um obviously I do a lot of um realism drawing. Mm -hmm. I never tattooed anything like that. I wasn't mm. at that level, but as I said, I might go back and learn it. Mm 
might go back to tattooing full time. I don't know. I'm I'm not overly big on planning. I like to just see where it goes. Yeah. It's just, yeah. How do you think that being in this industry can affect like your self esteem and your body confidence and things like that? Because like we've get trolls and we get ego feeding. So I like the ego feeding. Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, I had a friend who, he was his own ego feeder. He was his own hype man. Mm. And I learned a lot from him that you don't need other people to tell you. You just need to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if you wake up every day and go, I am the boss. Yeah. Like I am amazing. Why wouldn't you like me? Mm -hmm. That helps so much with self-confidence. Yeah. But in this industry, with the ego feeling, it makes you feel amazing. It really does. And then you get the trolls. And then you'll look in the mirror and go, hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then you've just got to go back to like the first lesson of but I am amazing and all these people do like me. Mm -hmm. So you've got to push that to one side yeah. and carry on boosting whether you boost yourself or you go and talk to someone and they make you feel it again. Mm -hmm. It's a constant like whack off, go that way, whack them off, go that way. Not literally yeah. whacking them off. I mean like you yeah, just yeah, push yeah, the yeah. trolls to yeah, one yeah, side. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I would agree with that. I think the problem for me as well, though, is that I find that I have to look at myself so much, so much more than I used to, and I see myself in so many angles that I've never seen myself in. Oh, do and you know I what? I take quite, so like, many pictures of myself, and I think, no, I've got a double chin in that one, mm. that bit of fat roll there looks yeah. wrong. And then if you post a picture you and then you realise afterwards, you think, oh, but everyone loves it. Yeah. And you're just like, well, I don't know what I was worried about. Yeah. And a lot of it. I tend to be the ones that I, think I get the most likes on because it's yeah, like, I like natural, the realness of you. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's hard. No matter how confident you are, there is always some insecurity in there. Yeah. Everyone's got their things that they're like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's like your proper, like is thrown in your face when you're in this work, I think. And then if someone picks on an, in an insecurity you have, like a troll or whatever, mm -hmm. it's harder to push that troll aside because it's something that you already are like, oh. Something I found really hard is I can't help but compare to other creators and stuff. And so I'm always like, ah, oh, don't have that. Oh, I don't have that. And and all the, I don't know if you've noticed, but like all of the like, proper successful ones that I've seen always have had a boob job and and then it starts to trick my brain and I'm like I can't be successful until I've had a boob job yeah see all the time but they were successful before they had a boob job because their success paid for their boob job yeah I suppose. so it's more like a boost you know yeah. like in Mario Kart when you yeah, get like yeah, the like, rocket yeah, and stuff yeah, you know yeah. it's like that yeah, it's just a I boost. see and I'm like, oh, I, should, I, should, I, I don't want one at all oh I do I've always wanted a boob job oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, see, I don't want I'll one get like one that. one day yeah. Well, one of my other friends, um, she does. She's more into the fin dom type thing, and she had a boob job paid for by one of her little pay pigs. Does she want to share his number? Yeah. No, she, that's like she was pretty. Uh, yeah. Was pretty if anyone good. wants to pay for my boobs, well, we can talk. Yeah. Just <laughs> drop her on Instagram. Oh, there we go. There's an Instagram plug. Yeah. Was, our, our socials will be down the bottom yeah. and stuff. So. There you go. I've wanted one for ages because obviously one of my biggest insecurities is I don't have big boobs mm. at all. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like big boobs. and there's How big would you want to go? So you're like, G. God, I don't even know how big G is. I don't think I know anyone with G-sized boobs. No. It's I just don't. like... Like the typical... <laughs> so you want nice them quite boobs. big. You yeah. want more than a handful. Yeah. But... Just like nice bouncy. Yeah. I like boobs. I think boobs are great. Boobs can make everything better. Yeah. I don't care if you're gay, I've straight. I've never felt a fake boob. Have you not? No, have you then? Yeah. Oh, I never have. Yeah, no, they do not feel the same. Do they not? No. I don't know. I've They're seen... a lot firmer. So it's... Yeah, I imagine. Although I've seen um, uh, Ruby 
Um, she had some that the 850cc size, but she's only had them filled to 550 or something. Mm. So when she puts like a push up bra on, or, or um, they, they like are there, but they're a lot more soft and kind of move a bit more freely. Oh, a bit more natural. Yeah, so I thought I thought that was really clever because you can have it that it was like that big, but it's not quite full. Yeah. So they're not like rock. Yeah, I'd like. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like being know. a natural feeling boobs. Yeah. That I, think. I see you can get like a teardrop shape, I think, which is supposed yeah, to be so a bit just less like a cup a bit more, I think, yeah. is the point That's of the thing them. that um, puts me off them is the scar. I don't want the scars. Oh, they're like, they're genius now. Oh, really? Like a lot of people, a lot of really good surgeons can hide the scars because they like sew you up inside out kind of thing. Oh, okay. So they sew you up on the inside so you're you're not left with like a big red scar you've got like a thin white one okay but um that is a big thing for me but i don't, I don't want them anyway but like no i see i don't mind that yeah i don't mind going for surgeries and stuff um i'm trying to think if there's any surgery that i'm like yeah i'd have that um i can get liposuction on my chin but yeah. like this is genetic like everyone in my family has this double chin i don't even think you've really got one oh, yeah, I know. Well, I can't actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Every, I've seen, I've seen, you see so many people on TikTok do that, that they go like that and then they've got a double chin. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Like, if I sit a certain know. way, like, you can just tell. Oh, and I don't okay. know why. Apparently there's exercises just... you can do. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. If you, like, supposedly, if you stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth, it disappears. Oh, yeah. And I do that and it's still there. There's a way to clench your jaw and put your tongue up, isn't yeah, you there? Got, like, and, you got a... and I try it and I look in the mirror and I'm like... Still there. I look like that guy or Family Guy with the big teeth. Oh, I, I, I don't watch much Family Guy. You don't watch Family Guy? Oh, why are we friends? <laughs> don't worry. You don't want boobs, Each you don't name. watch Family Guy. Yeah. No boobs, no Family Guy. But no, um, I definitely have a boob job. But I yeah, they. how we got into this. Uh, successful creators paying for their boobs. Yeah. I still, I can't. Oh, is it just body confidence, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, I can't think of anything that I would have. I would... I'd have a personal trainer, but that's not oh, quite Oh, do you same. know what? I would so totally get a personal trainer. I am so lazy. Yeah. Like, I've been to the gym twice this year. I don't think... Well, it is pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, see, I... I feel it goes, like, every other day. Yeah, I haven't been to the gym I've been this twice. Year. I signed up to the gym last May, and I went a lot from between May and September... And then I haven't been since. See, I don't want to go on my own. I'm, like, really anxious mm -hmm. in the gym. I go into the gym and I'm, like, instantly intimidated. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people in there who are working out and their aim is to lose their weight and stuff. I'm like, you go, bro. Mm -hmm. That is... But nine times out of ten, they're with a personal trainer. I'm like, maybe that's what I need. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit on the rowing machine for the next two hours taking I, up space I, like I love the round machine I like the climb I liked all the machine like the cardio machines I like the treadmill I like the step up I like when you climb the staircases yeah the one that kind of moves as you yeah yeah I like a rowing machine I like cross trainer but then you put me on the weight stuff and I feel really un uncomfortable because everyone's like so serious over there and everyone's like waiting and they're like right how many how many sets you got left or whatever and I'm like I don't know What's the like, set? Yeah, I'm literally, like, the first time I've sat on this machine, like, give me a break. Yeah, no. Um, I don't do a lot of cardio, so when I go, I do some weightlifting. Mm. Um, but I do prefer the rowing machine or the cross trainer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of treadmills. It's, it's laziness on my part. I don't I like, like the rowing machine when they have the game. Yeah, that's what they've got. They've got oh. the little games and you've got to play them. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. But I, just, I just whack some headphones in and just sit there and row and row. Yeah. And row my boat. Row, row, row your boat gently in the gym. Well, yeah. It's a shame it doesn't go anywhere because yeah. then everyone's You'd looking at you. It's like, I do get really quite self conscious in the gym. Um, yeah. And it doesn't help that on TikTok now you've got all of these women recording saying that men are looking at them. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I've seen Well, now I'm looking for the men looking at me. Yeah. Blech. Gym TikTok just seems, well, gym talk seems to be a bit toxic. Uh, some of it is some of it's quite funny I've found some really nice um, uh, creators that are trying to debunk it all and 
I like be a lot um, more genuine. Fitness chef, I think, is one. Joey Swall. Yeah. He's a bodybuilder. He's a bit he too... He's, he's quite brash for me. Oh, I like I'm him. I'm so I do like him, I yeah. find him a bit brash. But I, I do I do enjoy his content and I do like watching it, but I do think he... For me, he's just a bit like... He's just proper no-nonsense, isn't he? Yeah. And, but yeah, there was one... He, there was a video... A girl was recording herself in the gym and she was, like, trying not to look weak in front of Joey kind of thing. Mm. And he was in the background. He was just like... Ah. And then at the end he was like, that man... In the background, that handsome man, that handsome man with massive arms needs to mind his business. I'm like, it's just, I love him. I yeah, think he's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do like his videos, but yeah. You just wouldn't like him calling you out. <laughs> no, I wouldn't like him as a personal trainer. I would never go to the gym again. Yeah, I think he'd scare me. Yeah. I need someone who can just... I need a nice me. personal trainer. Yeah. Gently lead me and encourage me. Like... Or someone who wants to just cook my meals for me. My my biggest thing oh, yeah. is junk food. Mm. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned like pizza and kebab in this. So. And burgers. And burgers, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's you are. Okay, so do you have a funny story that your family will typically tell about you that you want to share? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Are you sure you want to share? Do I want to share it? Ask the question. Probably not. Oh. <laughs> but is it funny? Yeah, it is. It's okay. really funny. And it is a story that gets told to pretty much anyone new mm -hmm. that we meet. Um, so I'm not good at geography. Oh, no me. Terrible. Oh, no. I am really awful. Okay. Like, I misplaced a whole continent. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, I'm, not, I'm not quite... Yeah. Maybe I'm one level above you. Then. Yeah, probably. Um, I can't remember how it came up, but we were talking about Australia. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'd said something. And my friend was like, what? I was like, okay. And he was like, draw me where you think Australia is. Right. So I did. So I did like this bit up here and this bit down here, you know, that's America and then you got like Russia and the UK and stuff. And I put Australia, like in between Africa and South America. Okay. So Wow. We already know I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um And then he just laughed at me for like five minutes. Oh, oh that's what I said. He said, Where do you think Australia is? And I was like, in the middle. He was like, What do you mean in the middle? In I was like, middle. Well you got like South America here and like Africa and that here it's like in the middle yeah and he just laughed at me for like a good five minutes and I was like I've drawn you a picture what's so yeah. funny yeah like genuinely thought Australia was like the other side of where it actually is yeah so for some reason we had this rolled up world map okay so I could have easily have found just out just found out but uh, we unrolled it and he was like it's here yeah I was like car and I wonder people get jet lagged when they fly from here yeah <laughs> I was like that is nowhere near where I thought it was yeah oh, that's the thing it takes so long to fly to Australia but it like less time than it takes to fly to South America yeah like, so it just like, click no that. I just thought oh it's in between these two well technically it is in between these two but it's on the other side yeah, yeah so yeah. I wasn't wrong okay I get it, yeah technically you just had it you just needed to flip it yeah but playing off of that mm. which gets told to everyone like this silly cow don't know where Australia is. Yeah. My friend also, in passing conversation, so deadly serious, like, you'd have no reason not to believe it. Yeah. Iowa, in America, mm. uh, we were talking about how, like, um, America has names named after England, like oh, New yeah. Yorkshire yeah, yeah. and New England and stuff. And he said, yeah, Iowa means Isle of Wight, America. Right. I was like, ah, oh, genius! How do you know that? Yeah. I was like... And I believed this yeah. for a good year. Wow. And then I turned so around. Yeah. Like, it made sense. Yeah. He said it so nonchalantly. Yeah. And that was the end of the conversation. He just dropped it in, yeah, dropped so it back out. Yeah, so you just like, that, write that one down. Well, so right. <sighs> and my ability to obtain information is useless. But, but that, that one you stuck with. That was in there. And I turned around to one of our mates. Uh, we were at a Comic-Con. And I said oh, it to him. No. And um, he just walked away from me. He looked at me, he walked away from me, went over to our other friend. I was like, where are you going? I was talking to you. Mm. So I scurried off after him. And he turned around to our mate and he went, what did you tell her? 
Wow. And he went, what do you mean? And he went, Iowa. Mm. And it all clicked in my mate's head. And he started wetting himself again. And he was oh, like, you've man. been sitting on that for a year. I totally forgot about it. And I was like, you done me. Yeah. That was rude. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's probably like the most common stories that get told is Australia and Iowa because... Yeah. I need to go back to school and do geography. Well, it's not anything that's to do with your job. You don't need to be good at geography. To I'm, be I'm not going on holiday, to, so... Yeah. And even still, you just turn up at the airport. They yeah, I'm not you the pilot. You going, yeah, you don't need to know. Okay. I can see how um, you maybe <laughs> didn't want to share that one. Yeah. But to be fair, my geography is terrible in that... Um, James once made me draw a map of the United Kingdom and then mark where I thought all the cities were. Oh, yeah, no, I've got no chance for no, that. No, mine was absolutely terrible. Um, basically, any of the... He asked me specifically, like, football clubs, and I put them all kind of around London. Around London, yeah. I was like, they're around London, aren't they? Chelsea's near London somewhere, Chelsea, isn't it? Chelsea, I think, yeah, yeah. it is. Isn't but I had, like, Leeds down there. I couldn't tell you where Leeds was either, it's everything's above us so where is it it's up there somewhere yeah oh, it, it was bad anyway yeah now I'm good is Leeds even a football club or am I just thinking of did James just go Leeds and then I wrote that one down oh where's Arsenal is Arsenal the one see I don't know I was writing them I basically put I know all they're of called these... the Gunners that's that's about I had them all around London yeah I don't know no where I Arsenal probably would have done that as well I have to look up now where Arsenal is. No, Leeds. You want to you wanna find out if Leeds have a football club as well. Arsenal. But yeah, I'm no good at football either, to be fair. Maps. So a lot of my followers, they're like, do you like football? I'm like, no. Oh no, Arsenal is around. See, this is why it's confusing. Yeah, like Arsenal is next to London. Um, Leeds, football. There's a football... Leeds United, maybe? Yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, see, that's... Oh, yeah, see, that's miles away. Leeds is up here. Mm. Yeah, but I had it, like, down here as well. Oh, um, see, this is another thing. Like, if you look at the map of England, yeah, this yeah. is how I describe it, okay? Yeah. It's a guy sat on the toilet reading a newspaper. Okay. Because there's the butt. There's the butt. And there's the legs. Got you. And there's the arms. And there's the face. Yeah. And... That piggy shaped thing that's Ireland is the newspaper. Piggy shaped. So it's just turn it on the side, it's a pig. Looks like a Yorkshire Terrier that way. It's it little... kind of looks like a dinosaur as well. So. That's the extent of our geography. What, <laughs> making animals out of the map? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this... geography's not an easy subject. It's... Let's not pretend it is. It's, it's difficult for me because it's one of James's favourites. Oh, well, there you go. So you don't I'm need to know. You've like, got James. He yeah. can tell you. Just have the immediate contrast. Um, okay. So, what was your favourite subject in school? Not geography. Not geography, <laughs> no. <laughs> art. That's my art, guess. It was art, yeah. That was my favourite. There was a lot of freedom and creativity in it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I didn't do bad in... Oh, oh art followed by... Um, resistant materials I liked oh, building yeah. things mm -hmm. um, so I loved that but then again that's quite a creative subject anyway so they're basically mm -hmm. both art but yeah mine was always um, maths and history and then when we got to secondary school it was dance because that's when we started doing dance yeah we didn't have dance in primary see, school see in history especially after I moved to Wales I spent like the next three years learning about Hitler like, that mm. seemed to be the only thing we learnt about in history. Just Hitler. Yeah, and it was the same things all over again. I was like, oh. but I already did this. Oh, that's... that's Yeah, oh. I really enjoy... I don't know why I always enjoy... I always enjoyed exploring castles and... Oh, I love that. Museums yeah. and stuff. I love yeah. going to it. But, um... I do love history, actually. Um, I can sit there and talk about it for ages. Mm. Um, To the point where I, I look at the other person and I think, oh, you're bored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I like history, but I am rubbish at retaining, like, dates and years and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I someone's like, no. oh, when did this happen? I'm like, I don't know. Like, you asked me about World War Two. I learned it for three years, and I'll still go, this was 1945-ish? Mm. It's sometime no, around that when, I think Isn't that when it finished? Yeah, see? Was, the okay. date was there somewhere. Yeah. It's got something to do with World War Two, but, yeah. Mm. 
the Battle of Hastings, I only remember the date because of that catchy tune for Hastings Direct. 1066. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason yeah. I remember that I date. I gen genuinely, when I was like, I don't remember any dates, so I was like, except 1066. Yeah, 1066, that yeah. Um, so if you had to write a book tomorrow, what would you write it about? Oh, any book at all? Yeah. Hmm. Probably about historic royalty, aristocrats and vampires, mm -hmm. like the kind of things that vampires would have been, they would have been rich people and stuff. Mm -hmm. So probably it would probably be a throwback in time. I love vampires, I think they're great. Um, and it would be like that. Nothing like Twilight. That's, no. That's not... That was a very... Um girly fan fiction of vampires wasn't it that was that i was love like, twilight but that was like, like kids entry level into yeah vampire films yeah well i do like the films yeah i don't get me them, wrong but they're definitely not like your typical vampire film yeah so i'd like to go or story um a bit like underworld like the film underworld have you seen that mm. no oh. I'll, I'll write it down in a minute we'll, we'll look that one up <laughs> there's well. like a whole series of i'm not watching then. family guy <laughs> <laughs> i'm so disappointed <laughs> But um no, Underworld they've got like um like the elder vampires and then the younger vampires and okay. like werewolves come into it at some point, you know, as they do. Because yeah. there's always werewolves with vampires. Apparently. So I'd probably go back to like the elders, mm -hmm. um and go through that. Like have you have you seen Vampire Diaries? No. Nope. The originals? No. no, probably not. Okay. We're gonna write you a list. Yeah, right. And you're gonna watch them. Uh, you homework. will love vampire diaries. Though. I've been recommended vampire diaries so many times, but I just haven't I haven't even watched one episode. It's so good. So I'm good. currently watching Sister Wives. It's about a polygamous oh, family that, yeah, in America. With the um What do they live in Texas at the moment or something? Uh they live in Vegas in the part that yeah, I Yeah, Vegas won. and then they were gonna They is that I don't know, is that where Flagstaff is? Because I know they moved to a place called Flagstaff. I don't know. Don't know I've, I've seen a couple Texas. of clippets on TikTok and he got like the whiteboard out and they're going to move or something. And he starts explaining oh, okay. to them like why they should move. Oh, okay. No, I, I, I haven't got to that point yet. They moved from oh, Utah to it. Vegas. I knew they were moving at some point. Oh, I've, okay. seen, I've seen stuff on TikTok as well. But I used to watch it years ago. and I really liked it. And then um, I saw some clips on TikTok again. I was like, oh, I'm going to find that. So yeah, I've kind of been binge watching Sister Wives. Well, when I'm sick. You know those sick days I was talking about? Yeah, That's when just I just lay in bed, bed and yeah. watch Sister Wives. Um, I found The Good Doctor on TikTok. That's on Amazon Prime. Well, I don't know what that is either. It's about a doctor who's like heavily autistic. Oh, right. And like... Um, I think I've seen some clips from that, actually. Yeah, he's... Because he's like really good at di diagnosing, yes. but he doesn't quite do it right. And then he gets often gets like in a little bit of trouble. Or... Yeah, because he can't communicate with the patients properly and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it goes through like his struggles of being a doctor. But he's is it like a top end surgeon? surgeon. Oh. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I have the the problem. I I struggle a little bit with American dramas. A little bit. Yeah. Um. Or like American real life, but not real life dramas. Because like I really liked um House, but then oh I liked House. Uh, yeah, but then. What's his name? I'm rubbish with names. He, House. Dr. House. Is um, Gregory House, but I can't remember his real name right now, and it's really annoying me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, he's I, British, isn't he? Yeah, he um, is. What is his name? Yes, I'm gonna, we're going to Google that. It's going to really, as soon as you say it, I'm going to be like, yeah. Hugh Lowry. Oh, of course. Yeah. I, lo I love him. I love yeah, him. Yeah, he is really good. Um... I'm trying to think, if I had to write a book tomorrow, what would I write it about? Because I really like... So, yeah. I don't know. If I had to write a fiction book, I have always wanted to write, like, an hist historic fishing... Like, uh, historic fishing? Fishing. Woo! <laughs> historic fiction, like, romance novel. Yeah. I've always kind of like Roli write. Romeo and Juliet type of thing, or...? Um, I guess not quite so intense as that. It would be, like, um... Well, me and James have always wanted to write a book together where he would kind of write the male parts and I would write the female parts. So it would be like follow two different characters. But we haven't kind of like solidified any more than that. Like I've wrote like a couple of pages and he's wrote like a couple of pages, but we haven't like sat down to like 
oh, live together. Oh, you should do that. I think that would be great. Yeah, I, re I really want to, but oh. it's fine in the time, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, if I had to write a non-fiction book, I would write about, uh, I'd probably write a parenting book. And I think not you'd like, be so good at that. Yeah. Like, you're such a gentle parent. I try to be. But that's the thing. I, I think I wouldn't be like a, this is how you do it. It would be like... From your own point of view, what yeah. helped you kind of thing. Because yeah. I don't want to tell people, oh, this is how you do it. It's like a tell-all more than an instruction manual. Yeah, I, I totally would like get to what you mean. About that I, think, anyway. I think that would be... Yeah. Good. I would enjoy that. I'd I'd love to write, but writing takes. I'd a have long to get time. all my proofread because uh, the amount of spelling mistakes would be atrocious. Maybe you could um uh what's it called when you like speak it? A dictaphone. Yeah, you could do that. I could do. Yeah. You could do voice to text even. Oh no that that they don't understand my accent half the time. Oh really? I'll say something and then it'll come up with something totally different. I'm like where did you even get that from? Mm -hmm. It's like my Google and my Alexa will go off at random points. Oh, and you're like, I didn't say And Alexa. I'm like, I didn't even say anything close to your name mm -hmm. and you're answering me. I didn't even ask you a question. Yeah. I still haven't figured out what it is that makes them do it yet. No. No, no. So you don't know what that trigger word is? No. Or whatever it is that you say. So um, I guess it kind of relates to that. My next question is like, what's your biggest pet peeve? Is it that <laughs> your Alexa just goes off randomly? <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Um, I'm a bit, just like my biggest pet peeve in general. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few. Um, chewing is one of them. Yeah, that. I don't like that either. It, it makes me go... Ugh. I really don't like it when you see videos and people have got chewing gum. Because they keep... And you keep seeing the little flash of white. Do you know what? Bit. I love chewing gum, right? But if I'm in a shop or I'm talking to someone who's supposed to be like on a professional level or something and they're chewing chewing gum in front of me, I'm like, uh, ew. Yeah, like, I don't like it at all. It, it's not you personally, it's what you're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, I, do, I, I totally understand that one. I'd, I'd like say if I go into like New Look or something and one of the staff are chewing chewing gum, I'm, I'm automatically just like, uh, no, yep. you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. I mean, I've probably done it in situations that I haven't realised where I've had chewing gum in my mouth and I've spoken to someone. But normally, if someone comes up to me, I, like, tuck it right up yeah. the back of my teeth. Yeah. And then once... When people are literally chewing while yeah, talking to you. while you're to talking you, to me uh, and you can see it and the noise. I see so many videos uh, of it and yeah, it just drives me insane. But yeah, there's probably, chewing is probably my biggest one, followed by people scuffing their feet as they walk. Oh, okay. I don't get that one, but... No? Uh, it's like when people like... Yeah, I am shuffle. Fan, but yeah, is, I don't, that doesn't, doesn't bother me, I guess. It's just a noise that irks me. I don't like um, when people talk to you wearing sunglasses. Because I can't look at your eyes, or, or I, because I, I end up looking at people's mouths. You're like this. And, yeah, because yeah. I, I, or you can see yourself. So I end up looking at people's mouths, and I'm like, that's weird. You can't look at people's <laughs> mouths while you're talking. So I, I find sunglasses really difficult. I'm always like, can you just. Oh, see, that doesn't bother me so much. One that has actually come up recently for me is mumbling. Because mm. um, if someone's not facing me, um, or they're mumbling, and I have to say, pardon two or three times i get annoyed yeah like all i ask is that you look at me so i can see your mouth mm -hmm. so i guess it's kind of like the reverse like you like to see the eyes and i like to see the mouth yeah just so i can like fully comprehend it yeah i should probably go for a hearing test um maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's getting bad um and then so i've got two questions and I, in my head if I do more of these videos they're going to be like the two questions that I ask everyone okay so the first one is do you have anyone that really inspires you and then do you want to like share a bit more about them um, and then the second question was just going to be what's your favorite childhood memory okay so for inspiration we're talking like people I know or just anyone Any, anyone who you yeah um a lot of people, really. Mm -hmm. um, for the longest time, I, re I was really inspired by Kat Von D. Um, that makes sense. And her story 
um, of how like she was 14 and she became the tattoo artist and then she became um, a makeup artist in the makeup industry and now she's gone into music and it's kind of like she has gone through so much and battled addiction um, but then also followed by any inspiration is also bad points like she said some pretty questionable things that I can't agree with and it at that point it kind of like mm, do you inspire me mm -hmm. it's always so difficult isn't it yeah um at the moment at the moment I don't think I have like a constant muse mm -hmm. um there are a lot of people who I do like who I who do inspire me in different ways mm -hmm. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit more Different like subject. Yeah, I don't have one thing. person. I'm like, oh, I, I like what they... A little bit of that. I like a little bit of that. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to mix it up. I love Jeffrey Star for the way he comes across and his makeup and stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, some of the things he's done and said are a bit questionable. Yeah. And I can't agree with that. So I have another person who... I can agree with for mm -hmm. something else and I love how they do art um, musicians and things like that so at the moment I guess as I've gotten older I've branched out more mm -hmm. and I'm inspired by more people yeah. doing different things mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot more sense to me because it's almost like having a mood board yeah and then because then you don't want to just be like one other person because that's them yeah but when you can take little bits and then you add that to kind of who you are and who yeah. you want to be yeah because not one person does everything no. really well no. um one person like cannot complete you no 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 you, you'd have to and you would be really boring if you were just like a copy as yeah. well yeah um so i think it's important to have more than one inspiration in your life yeah um that's from my favorite childhood memory um, I have so many memories, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't really remember anything from my childhood. Mm. I actually remember quite a lot. Hard to pick a favourite. It, it really is hard to pick a favourite. I mean, there's been so many people, so many things I probably shouldn't share. Like, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> typical teenager things that your parents shouldn't know about, you know, drinking and mm -hmm. having fun. So you, you liked your teenagers then? I did. I think... Being 14 mm -hmm. was probably the best time. Yeah. It was really carefree. You didn't have your GCSEs. It was kind of like your last year to muck about. Mm -hmm. But you were like old enough to go out and enjoy have your that time. Bit of yeah. So a lot of the things I did when I was 14 were really fun. We'd go camping. But then again, I've also got a lot of fond memories from like preschool and yeah. stuff. Um, primary school, different people. I suppose that just shows I haven't had such a bad life, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, so but... it's really nice that you can't even, like, find one in particular. So. Yeah. I mean, I've got favourite memories with you. Mm -hmm. I've got some with other various mutual friends we have. Mm -hmm. That I remember, the, the picture you shared of both of us not oh, long yeah. ago. Yeah. I remember that day. That was a good day. That yeah, was, I really um, enjoyed In Cardiff, that day. wasn't it? Yeah. And I think... It's just things like that mm -hmm. that you can remember. It's just really wholesome. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, much like the influences of people, I don't think I could have one favourite memory because no. so many of them have made up who, you are who I am. Yeah. But yeah. Do you have a favourite childhood memory? Um. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I think I'm much the same as you. I think... Typically, my favourite memories are, and it's probably not a good thing, but they're always associated with, like, Christmas. I just loved Christmas. We made such a big deal out of Christmas. Yeah, and, I love Christmas. Yeah. It was just always, like, obviously I used to get presents, and that was always really nice. Yeah. Um, but it was more just about it being this family day that we would play games, and, like, you know what I mean? You'd actually be together without distractions. Yeah. So my noise are kind of around Christmas, I think. Or I really liked having... Um, like a film day with my mum. We would just lay in bed all day watching films. Mm. I really liked that. 
And me and my mum used to do this other thing where we would go for, where you'd have a day on the buses. So we'd get like a day rider each. Yeah. And we would just go around on the buses around Southampton. We'd like jump off and on different buses. And then if we went shopping, we would then jump on the bus with like our shopping and take all the tags off. And yeah, that was probably my. Oh. Yeah. So basically like family time, I guess, with my mum. Was there anything else that you wanted to share? Anything that we didn't cover that you're like, I really want to mention this? Um, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much covered everything that anyone really asks mm -hmm. us um, or they want to know. Yeah. I think if you've got any other questions, and you, like, or we've like... We've mentioned something that you want us to elaborate on. Mm -hmm. Definitely like comment it or whatever and we can... Do part two. Yeah, if, you, if that was something that you were interested in but yeah. I will add <laughs> this is the first time like anyone's really going to hear my voice oh yeah and that people have been asking me about it so much um like for the past three or four months now because mm. I think people realized after about two months I hadn't actually said anything yeah. I hadn't done a video yeah. or spoken yeah um and they're like oh so when are we going to hear your voice well now yeah now <laughs> Here you, you go. go there you go I um remember on TikTok because it was months before anyone had heard my voice and for everyone thought I was American. I get that a lot. I always thought I was American. And they'd be like, what time is it for you? And I'm like, 4, 4 15. And they're like, oh, it's 4 15 for me too. And I'm like, I'm in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I would always get that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go. That's Vixen's voice. Um, we'll put all of our socials in the description. Yep. Um, Anything else? No, I don't think so. I'm just trying to think. Um, I think that was a pretty extensive yeah. uh, questions and answers. I wrote a good list. You did write a good list. <laughs> uh, so, goodbye.